Hey everyone, I'm Jonathan with Audio Advice. Welcome back to our monthly live stream. Hope everybody had a great Halloween. Uh, in my family, you can see as soon as Halloween is over, we're on to the next one. So let us know, hey, when is it too or early to start decorating for Halloween? We've already now. had a good debate now. back and forth. So let us know where it is that you're joining us from, when you think it's time to start decorating for Christmas. Also, it's a happy hour, so we'll make sure that we cheers everybody. Let us know what it is uh, that you're drinking. It's good to be back. As I'm sure most of you guys who have been on our live streams in the past know, we uh, we had a big event back in August uh, called our first ever Audio Advice Live. It was a ton of fun. We'll tell you guys a little bit more about that here in just a few minutes. Our good friends from, from KEF were there, and we'll show you what they had set up, and we'll introduce our friends from KEF here joining us for the first time on our live stream. Uh, but that was a whole lot of fun. We decided to give our team a month off as a result of all of the big efforts that went into pulling off Audio Advice Live this year. So now we're back. So happy uh, November. Can't believe it's already November. Thanksgiving is just around the corner and uh, the holidays and the holiday season will be here in, in no time. So again, let us know where it is that you're joining us from and uh, what it is that you're drinking. Uh, it's my honor to introduce a couple of new friends uh, to our live stream from KEF. We've got Adam and we've got Jack. So Adam, I will start with you and then of course we'll welcome back Nick and Leon. So again, great to be back with everyone. Adam, uh, if you don't mind, tell everybody where it is that you're originally from or where you live and then of course where you're at right now which will be really cool to talk about and then uh, let everybody know a little bit more about your role with kef and our our kind of a fun question for the today is what is the next home theater uh movie or scene you're excited to see on your uh on your home theater so what are you excited to see next on your home theater i guess is, is a more concise awesome. way to ask that question so again adam welcome Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Uh, I was actually born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Now live in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I'm actually uh, just outside uh, yep. the back door, basically. And uh, right now I'm actually up in Marlboro, New Jersey, which is where uh, KEF USA's corporate office is. So I'm actually sitting in what we call the KEF Music Lounge. This is a place we bring our, our business partners up and we are able to audition everything we make. You can see the, the blades just over my shoulder here. You can see... Uh, Hold on, there we go. LS60s and titanium, somewhere over there. I'm back. Yeah. Point. Not a virtual yeah. background. Those are actually <laughs> no, not yeah. a virtual background. That's a that's a real background. You can see the moving TV is proof, uh, and actually the little white speakers there are the LSX2s. We're going to talk yeah. about today. Um, and so yeah, so uh, Marlboro, New Jersey is our corporate headquarters. Uh, I've been with Kef uh, four years in January. Uh, I am a what we call a regional sales manager, so I cover. Our, uh, Texas, up to Indiana, Kentucky, over to the Carolinas, and down to Florida. So kind of the whole South. Uh, oh, South. That's the region. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, quite a few states on the road quite a bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, I get to get to sell some of the best audio equipment out there and uh, can't really argue with that. Very cool. And what are you uh, what are you drinking this afternoon? Or this oh, I've got uh, one of my favorite uh, kind of entry level scotches, which is a, 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 a space side blend called Monkey Shoulder. Very cool. Very cool. Let us know what you guys are drinking there at home. I see someone from Kalamazoo. Of course, that's one of my old uh, stomping grounds. I usually have one of the, a good something from Bell's. But again, uh, and then favorite, or what are you looking forward to seeing most? Or next? Actually, I'm going to steal uh, Marcus's comment because, uh, yeah, they just released All Quiet on the Western Front. I got to watch that when I get home. Uh, I've been seeing the preview for it. It looks really intense. I've already heard, heard some great reviews about it. So I was going to say the new Avatar movie, but definitely want to watch All Quiet in the Western Front. That's going to be awesome. Very, very cool. And uh, we've got a special treat for you guys at 6 o'clock. So in less than an hour, we have our world premiere of a super cool Ultimate Gaming Home Theater, which actually is Adam's personal home theater. So you're going to have a treat to see that right at 6 o'clock. We'd love for you guys to jump on there. We'll tell you guys more about it, sort of what went, by, what went into that. Uh, but you guys can expect to see that here at six o'clock Eastern time. We're going to be really excited about that. Um, well, great to have you, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Jack. Comments are great already. I appreciate it, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Jack, welcome. Hello. So I guess I'll give you a little bit of my background. If you, you can't tell from the accent, I'm uh, born and uh, raised in New Jersey, Jersey Shore. Go Phillies. Big night tonight. It was a rough night last night. So I'm, I'm flying my, my fanatic flag today. Um, been with Kef in my 15th year. I've been in either the audio or uh, computer industry for since I'm out of college, which is a lot of years, which will, uh, Adam, we'll leave that be right now for today. No age Let's, jokes. I promise no age jokes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to ingratiate myself with my new friends here. And, you know, it's the last thing I, I want to have to deal with. Anyway, I'm an audio engineer, uh, an acoustic engineer, more to the point. And, uh, I am based now in Nashville, 
Tennessee, and the I know we were talking about it in the pre-show about the weather. It's really just phenomenal. Anybody that complains about there not being an autumn this year has not been outside. It's It's been just absolutely lovely the last couple of days. So I do training. Uh, I write the blog. I do a lot of content from marketing, and I do things like this, basically, um, I provide engineering assistance to the sales team whenever they need it. So I get to do a lot of these fun things and, and kind of hang out with you guys, which is always a, a highlight for, for my week and, and what I do. So I'm really just happy that you all have me on the show today. I can't wait to uh, kind of dive in and talk a little bit. Absolutely. Well, we're glad to have you. And again, uh, I know Adam stole your thunder a little bit, so maybe you got another one. Uh, what are you looking forward to seeing most on your, ne on your next home theater experience? I, I, I was supposed Top Gun and, and also, and I know it's probably a ways out, but the, the Wakanda movie that I think is launching this week looks like that should be a lot of fun when, when that hits. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, the, the, the last really spectacular movie I saw in my theater um, was 1917. I thought that was just phenomenal. It was really it just, it sounded great. Um, you know, my, my theater is a little bit on a different scale. I use LS fifties all the way around, um, and a Sony 75 in a, in a bespoke room. And it's, it also goes to show that you don't have to go super grand with everything. You can, you can have a really nice moderate system and, and, you know, it's, it's a showpiece. In fact, again, it's where I'll be in about an hour. Um, downstairs watching the Phil's tonight with a Paps Blue Ribbon. So I'm ready there to go. go. <laughs> there we go. You got, when you got when you go all in, you got to go all in. Well, well, again, listen, right? I either either I'm going to be faking it and I'm going to be a fraud, or I'm going to be down there all the way with peanuts and a beer and and texting my fam, my kids. Yeah. I don't know if the PBR is more of an attack on Jack's taste in beer or what Kev's been paying our people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Philly thing. If I could get a hold of Schmidt's beer, I would be all in. But you can't get Schmidt's beer in Nashville, so you got to go with the next best thing for a Philadelphia ball game, and that would be Paps or Yingling. And I don't have any Yingling, but I got Paps. I will love good Yingling. Well, hey, welcome. Glad to have you as well. Uh, Leon, welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be back. Absolutely. I know it's been a couple of weeks or been a couple of months since our last live stream. But anyway, great to have you back. Uh, same questions. What is it that you're drinking this evening? And of course, uh, what are you excited to see next? Well, my theater is kind of torn up right now, so I'm, I'm waiting to uh, rebuild it. And uh, but uh, Top Gun will be on the list. That, that's one of the first ones. And, uh, you know, I love the Game of Thrones. And I, I found out that came out in 4K Atmos redone. Uh, so I may rewatch re the whole thing because when we saw that the first time I had it was on like a tiny system. Yeah, so it'll be different this time. Absolutely. And I'm drinking a uh, hazy. I'm from a local brewery here, uh, Foothills Brewery. Nice. It's a hazy IPA. And very, uh, very cool. looking forward to the show. It's well, good glad to be, to be back. And Leon, you've got some pretty exciting news that I'll have to let you share with everyone. I'm a grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. And my youngest got married two days before I became a grandpa so on October 15th. So uh, it's been quite a busy last two weeks. That's right. That's right. On the personal front. Well, congrats on both of those. Uh, I know it's a very, very exciting season for you. So, um, and again, great to see where everyone's joining from. We got folks joining from all over the country. Lots of folks on the West Coast. To the folks on the West Coast, hey, cheers. It's, it's five o'clock here on the East Coast. The East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining. I think I even saw uh, some folks from Brazil and a couple other places. So it's great to see everyone. Nick, welcome back. Yeah, glad to be back. Yeah, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm our lead designer for everything that's outside of North Carolina for home theater. So I do a little bit of everything in terms of design, equipment selection, calibration. So jack of all trade, master of none, uh, allegedly. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, no. Uh, as for movies that I'm excited to see in my theater, I picked this up recently. This was the 4K UHD version of Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, I saw it originally streamed through like Amazon. wasn't that great quality, so I'm excited to actually see it in its uh, its full form or full ish form. But mm -hmm. as for what I'm drinking, I've got a uh, Ninja Porter from Asheville Brewing, Ooh. a uh, really good porter. So, cheers, everybody! Yeah, Nick is uh, he lives in Asheville at the moment, so he's always got a good uh, local brew. I had to drive about a breweries out there, right? Just yeah, to... it was, just I picked two. this up literally about a quarter mile from my house. Asheville Brewing's got a place right there. So <laughs> I could have walked there, but didn't feel like it. Well, hey, guys, again, thanks for joining us. And uh, I just want to go ahead and let everybody know, if you didn't have the chance to make it to Audio Advice Live, 
Uh, obviously, we're going to bring it back bigger and better in 2023. So go ahead and mark your calendar for August 4th through the 6th. Again, it'll be right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's going to be a ton of fun. We had a ton of fun this last year. If you're into audio, if you're into high-performance home theater, if you're into high-performance two-channel, we had lots of cool toys on display. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be bigger and better this year for sure. And uh, our friends from Kef, again, we, we've only been partnering with Kef for, I don't know, maybe six to nine months or so. Yep, like that. Uh, but it was great for you guys just to, to jump all in. And you guys supported the show in a big way. So, Adam, maybe you can tell a little bit, everyone a little bit about your experience at Audio Vice oh. Live and maybe a little bit about what you guys showed off there at the show. Yeah, I mean, the show was amazing. And, and uh, what was actually the, the first thing I want to point out that's unique is, you know, all of us who work in the industry, uh, know each other. We've all switched companies, things like that. And our trade shows and things were canceled a lot. A lot of the regional stuffs were all were, things were events were all canceled because of, of COVID and things. And so the event was amazing right off the bat because all of us in the industry, yeah. it was the first time we saw some of each other in you know three, three plus years. It's a coming out party, if you will. And so um, it was amazing just to have different vendors and things coming into our rooms, going into other rooms and checking stuff out. I mean, it Basically, if if it's not at the Audio Advice Live show, it doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> you guys had everyone there, uh, and it was abs. I mean, it was an absolutely fun time, uh, beyond a fun time. It was amazing. We're already looking forward to next year. We're actually we uh, we're going bigger next year. We've actually uh, reserved an additional room too yeah. for next year to show off more stuff. Right. The show was amazing. We were able to set up the Blade One Metas downstairs with a huge pair of sound system. Just had those rocking down there in the lobby with an Epson short throw, just kind of showing off a, a unique system. That 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 got tons of people stopping by as we were just kind of playing music there. Uh, that top right picture was showing off our LSX twos, showing off the LSV wireless twos. And then one thing we were really uh, proud to do was we built a really inexpensive theater using a NAD T seven five eight receiver, and then uh, used all of our Q series uh, box speakers with a couple of subs. And we made a really awesome theater that was, uh, I think, for like under 20 grand retail, I believe, yeah. with one of the, the new Epson LS12000. So the show was amazing. If you're on the fence about going, just come. It, the, show, the show is just a great time. There's so much you can get your hands on and see. Um, I think we're also used to shopping online, too. Like Even for me, seeing some of the other vendors that we know of, getting to touch their products like uh, Rose High Five, for example, yeah. getting to actually touch some of their new amps and preamps and stuff was just amazing. So if you'd like to get your hands on stuff too, you got to come out to the show. It's awesome. It was, yeah. uh, it was a great time. We had a great, great time. And again, thank you so much for the support. <laughs> and uh, it was just, like I said, it was awesome to be back in front of everyone. It was actually great to meet so many folks from the live stream who join us every month in person. We had folks obviously from all over the Carolinas, but we had folks coming from Florida and from Texas and New York yeah. You know, all over the country, which was which was just uh, a ton of fun. I think we had a little over twelve hundred people in attendance, in addition to about two hundred or so folks from the industry. Mm -hmm. So again, for our first year, we were super excited about uh, all of the success and all of the support. And again, we can't wait to do it bigger and better next year. Yeah, yeah, we're super excited. Very cool, very cool. Uh, well, while we have it, why don't you guys tell us a little? Let's get into the giveaway. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that we are giving away here today? Outstanding. Well, so what we're giving away is a pair of what we call our sound wave edition. Uh, which is actually a special selection of fabric and colors uh, done by Terrence Conran, as uh, we couldn't, couldn't remember that name earlier. And uh, he's the one who actually did all the aesthetic design for the LSX uh, first version and now the second version. So this is the second generation of the LSXs. This uses the same platform and software that our LS50 wireless twos use and the brand new LS60s. So it's all one platform, all one app. Uh, you get a whole host of inputs from analog, optical, coax, as well as an HDMI arc, USB-C. You get uh, AirPlay 2, Bluetooth, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, a uh, whole host of streaming services from Amazon to uh, Tidal, Spotify, uh, and more. I can't even remember. But uh, yeah, we're, uh, they're $1,400 retail, and we're giving away a pair tonight. So awesome. you can't go with that. Those, they sound amazing. I was fortunate enough to see them. I think before they actually launched at the Kef Lounge, there where you are back in, I can't even remember what it was, maybe March, April timeframe, mm -hmm. uh, yep. which, was, which was just really, really cool. Really quick, uh, before we just fully dive right into all the questions, why don't you give everyone kind of a little bit of a preview about the the Music Lounge and sort of what it, what purpose it serves. And we got a couple of folks, or I'm sorry, a couple of photos that we'll show uh, for everyone. Sure. Yeah. So we, we, we built the music lounge in response to uh, uh, a lot of our, our dealers, a lot of our resellers, a lot of even our customers, you know, wanting a place that they can come and experience what it is Kef does. 
Uh, but we wanted to design it in a way that it was actually how you would experience it in your home, own home. So even though we have a lot of speakers set up everywhere and things, everything's kind of designed and finished to give you that in-home experience. So whether it be the custom install speakers that we have in the ceiling throughout the place or all the freestanding products you see here, it's all set up, installed, working, programmed. Of course, the theater, it's a 35 by 25. It's, a, it's actually a THX certified theater. Uh, one of the only, or it is the only publicly available only. THX certified theater uh, in the country. Right. Uh, and that's a what's what's called a dominus size room. So it's a huge room. It but is, the impact yeah. of the system in there is absolutely amazing. And uh, you can see some of the, our, we have three equipment racks there. And there's some of the audio advice team actually up there listening to the, uh, the that was the Blade One Metas when we released those and had audio advice come. So, so it's where we do all of our trainings. Uh, Jack comes up here a lot and does trainings with the, some of our corporate partners. And it allows people to really get their hands in where I'm actually sitting right now. Instead of doing that, uh, uh, in our in our industry, brands are notorious for setting up white plastic tables and have everybody sit in a row to do training. Uh, our training room is actually this bar I'm sitting at. So we've got yeah, a fully stocked service service actually <laughs> uh, over here in front of us. And so we can have people sitting there eating, eating food, enjoying drinks while we do all of our trainings, things like that. So it, it really kind of displays uh, a level of an experience that matches the, the audio experience we create with the products we built. Yeah, well, you guys have done a fantastic job there. Just very forward thinking and the way that you guys put that together. And it's an incredibly efficient use of space. It's, it's very modern. It's very well utilized. The theater is amazing. I mean, even the rack, the way that you guys put that together and made that almost like a focal point yep. of the experience instead of something that, you know, yep. you're tucking away in the closet. So I know Nick, Nick, maybe yeah. real quick, share a little bit about your experience when you had the chance to go up there. Yeah, no, the uh, the main living area was, it really impressed me actually how good it sounded or well actually excuse me the kitchen area so the kitchen area they have a theater in their kitchen area which what see what is it a five two two is that what it uh, is it's a five uh yeah five two two mm -hmm. yeah so it's a five two two and they have subs hidden into their kitchen cabinets which i was like hey that you know what i need to do that i can keep cleaning supplies anywhere i'm just going to put that in my kitchen next uh but no it sounded really great there and you know just overall the entire experience i've never done a training with a mimosa in my hand um unless my camera was off jonathan uh but other than that uh no it was just it was a really great experience overall very very cool yeah leon we gotta get you up there one day yes we do <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All right. So, uh, Jack, bring you in here a little bit. For those maybe who I'm sure just about everybody, if not everybody, is familiar with Kef, very familiar, getting lots of great comments about folks that love you guys as a brand. Uh, but maybe for anyone who doesn't know, or maybe there's something that they don't know about Kef, can you guys, can you share a little bit about sort of, sort of the, the brand story and, uh, you know, where you guys are positioned today? Mm -hmm. Sure. So we've been around since 1961. Uh, we were founded, and, and in fact, we're still on the same site that we were founded on in Maidstone in 1961. And Raymond Cook was our founder, and he he was a, an engineer for the BBC as well as well as a few other companies. He was a radio man for the Royal Navy in World War II, and and he was a, a speaking forward thinker. Right, he was really ahead of his time. And the the great anecdote that I love to share is, is how we were founded. Cause one of the things that Kef is known for is, is new materials, new processes, a lot of engineering. You know, we, we have a, a full staff of, of engineers and physicists and, you know, doctoral uh, people, you know, on, on staff that work with us, you know, work for us full time engineering things. That's been the root of what we've done since the very beginning. And the great story is, is Raymond Cook was out to, lunch with a friend of his, this was maybe 1959, and plastics were sort of the new fun thing. And, and this friend of his was the franchise holder for all the yogurt cups in the UK, the plastic yogurt cups. And so he's showing this off. And right, keep in mind, right, this was something that most people hadn't really seen before. And this, according to Cook, was his epiphany, where he was like, this is what we can do here. Because the problem at the end of the 50s was um, the recording industry and the playback industry, for the most part, was light years ahead of the actual speaker industry. We were using just paper. There wasn't a lot of science involved in it. So, you know, if it was a rainy day, it would sound completely different than on a dry day and, and so on and so forth. There weren't really no standards and no consistency. So that's how KEF was founded. Uh, and we moved forward with that by the end of the 1960s, early 1970s, we were actually renting space, uh, renting time on mainframe computers out of Oxford University. And, you know, um, different, these were computers at the time that only governments and really 
you know, major schools had time on. So he was able to kind of jump on and we actually began to buy processors in the 1970s. We were the first people to do that. We were actually doing design work at that time. And it's funny, that's actually where reference comes from. The, the whole point of reference is we had all of this data that, you know, we were taking charts and measurements and, you know, decibels and impedance loading and all of this. And, and one of the engineers was, was like, we have to be able to figure something out with this data. And what they actually did was they took a line sample of a reference speaker and they compared the data. So, you know, the left and right channel would, or left and right speaker were actually matched and then they have to be within a half dB of the line. And that's where reference actually came from. So it came from our sort of fascination with, with technology and computers and so on and so forth. And that's what's brought us, you know, today, uh, we're, uh, you know, around the world. Uh, and we're also, one of the things I think that I, is most exciting to me when I speak to audiophiles, I speak to people who really know um, the business, we're sort of the founders or among the founders of what we know as the British sound, right? That that very neutral sound, it doesn't really add anything. It, it you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. What you're really, you know, the goal of that, that sound is to hear what the microphone heard in the studio, for example. So, you know, we're, we were in the vanguard of that and we still are doing that today with our products that we have, the LS that we're going to talk about and, and, and Blade and, and things like that. So, you know, that's a little bit of, of our background and, and who we are. Uh, but I think the thing that, you know, to sum it up that we're most proud of is the fact that we maintain an entire engineering staff from, so when we, put a DSP together, for example, in an LSX. That's our DSP. We don't just go to the DSP store and pull one off the shelf and say, let's plug this in. We design them specifically for our products. And same thing with you know, our crossovers and things. And, and that's the message that I always like to try and get across to, to people who are really seriously into this, uh, into this hobby, if you will, is, is the fact that we're you know, we're, we're walking the walk as, um, as, and not just talking the talk about our engineering and whatnot. That's a little bit about us. Very, very cool. Yeah, great story. Lots of great context there. Getting a lot of great comments as well. Uh, yeah. Obviously, maybe something you can tell uh, everyone about is you know what some one of the things that you guys are known for, which is this you know UniQ technology. If you look at the speakers, whether the you know the blades behind you, Adam, or whether it's the um, the LSX that we're giving away today, you kind of see that uh, part of all of your technology and all of your different speakers. So, what tell us a little bit kind of what's behind that thought, that design, the benefits. You know, it's not your traditional speaker where you see a tweeter and a wolf mid range. Uh, so, maybe you guys can elaborate a little bit more on on the approach there. Sure. Before I do that, I just want to address. There was I see a couple of comments about the speaker that's on my left or on the on the right side of the screen here. Um, what what is that on the speaker that keep asking? That's called marketing. That's what that is. It's just a really cool picture, and that's it's all it is. It just there's nothing wrong there that we need <laughs> marketing. So UniQ, if you listen to my voice, and I have a, a pronounced um, sort of a whistle sometimes or a lisp when I, when I speak. So from my my vocal range of speaking will go from about once 180, 200. And when you hear that, it could be up into the 3000s. The simple point is there's not one speaker that can that can replicate even my speaking voice. It just can't do it, right? Because the uh, a mid-range driver or a woofer is going to be good at lower frequencies. But in order to properly replicate my voice, I've got to have a tweeter as well, right? So the problem starts with how we're going to mount the tweeter in the mid-range. Because once I have my tweeter, say, over here and my mid-range over here, it's the train that leaves Chicago and the train that leaves St. Louis, and they arrive in New York at different times, even if they're going the same speed. Same thing that happens to our ears. So what we have now is an incoherence between the high frequencies and the low frequencies. That's just in my speaking voice. Now let's put an orchestra together or a movie soundtrack or, you know, whatever it is. And that effect gets magnified just by, you know, I don't know. I don't exponentially magnify it. I, I can't put a number on it, right? But you get the point. So what we've done actually is we've taken the tweeter and it's not just a coaxial speaker because a coaxial speaker is going to have a problem with the Z axis inside and out, right? Where in a, a tweeter and a woofer or a tweeter in a mid range in two different places will have a problem on the Y axis because they're in two different times. So what we've done is we've taken the tweeter and we've put it in the acoustic center of the mid-range driver. So it becomes not a coaxial. 
and not a um, co-planer, which would be like your front of your speaker, but it's a coincident speaker. So the X, the Y, and the Z all meet at the same time, right? So I don't want to get too technical. That's just technical as I want to go with it. But mm -hmm. what the result of that is, is that we're time aligned. So there's full coherence between the, the high notes and the low notes and when they reach your ear. So your brain doesn't have to waste any of its processing time figuring out is it two different sounds? Is it one different sound? And what your brain just does is go, that's just noise. That's all it is. And that's what tends to happen. So the question is, why not with low frequencies? Well, low frequencies are less directional than high frequencies. The higher in, in, in frequency you go, the more directional they come. So it's, it's not true to say, well, low frequencies aren't directional. They're less directional. So our brains have an easier time picking out where that sound is coming from. Much more... Uh, easy time than say with the higher frequencies. And that's just a product of how we're built. So what UniQ actually does is it solves that problem of time coherence. And then the what you're going to get because of UniQ is a sound stage where you know all the instruments on the sound stage are where they were recorded spatially in time. And you can you'll get a nice 3D effect from that. Um, I've had sit, uh, recordings, really good recordings, where they're done, they're mixed and mastered so well that uh, certain instruments are actually outside of the speakers, and that's because of the the timing coherence with the speakers, with the mid range and the UniQ. So, you know, it's it's difficult to do this without getting super technical, but I think that kind of you know sums it up. I always like the Chicago train and the New York and the St. Louis train. Right. If they leave at the exact same time, they're traveling at the same speed, but they're going a different distance. So one's going to get to New York faster than the other. And that's exactly what UniQ actually does. Yeah, that's a great way to explain it. That's and a good maybe, analogy. Maybe some of the benefits that, that um, you guys are known for just in terms of how that impacts you know, sound dispersion and, and so forth. Maybe mm -hmm. you can elaborate a little bit more on that as well. Adam, you, Jack. Go ahead, Jack. I got distracted by a comment that caught my eye. So, I understand. dude, there have been so many good comments and questions. I want to. They're like, am like, I can't. Amazing. We could do a five-hour show on the comments, and I'm you, and I'm, I'm looking. I go, boy, I'd love to speak about that one. Well, yeah. I'll, so, apologies I'll, on that. Can you? Yeah, I'll, I'll use my quick pitch on on because uh, I, I I often uh, frequently, you know, Jack does a lot of training for our resellers and our business partners. I often come across. Uh, consumers, people who are using these. And one of the ways I like to pitch kind of UniQ is why it's so different is um, it, you know, any speaker sounds good, but where Kef is so unique with UniQ is that it creates more room filling sound that just sounds better in more places. Uh, you know, a speaker makes sound in 360 degrees, but it's only in a certain area. Does it sound absolutely perfect? Does it sound like the designer intended? And that's what we call the sweet spot. That's that right. spot you got to kind of sit, sit right here and it sounds perfect. Like, you know, see the blades there behind me, you know, there's a, there would normally with any other brand be a chair right there where you have to sit right there to have the great sweet spot. If I move out of the way or hold on, here we go. You'll notice we have, we have a couch there because our sweet spots actually huge. We can sit three or four people on that couch. And everybody's in the sweet spot. So UniQ allows us to. Have you run about 160 degree dispersion yep. from the from the front from the front baffle, which is huge, just tremendously. Wide. That's the sweet spot. Yeah. So we're able to have better sound in more places, more accurate sound in more places. We're not saying somebody else's speaker isn't as accurate. It's just we're accurate in more places because of the way UniQ works. And I saw, uh, I want to touch on one comment someone else said is, why don't more people do concentric drivers? Because it's tough. It's really, really hard. Um, we started this in the 80s, and we're now on our 12th, working on 13th generation. And it's incredibly expensive. It takes an incredible amount of engineering, of research. Uh, every single UniQ driver is actually bespoke built for that speaker. So on the outside, the driver may look the same. They all may look just like a standard UniQ driver, but each one is actually designed, engineered, and built just for that speaker it's in. So we're on the 12th generation, 13th generation we're working on now, but we have you know 50 different versions of that generation driver because each one's built for each each speaker. There's I just there's a, a really great question that I, I caught and it really <laughs> 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna plug through. Like, I'm just gonna I'm just, man, are amazing. Okay, and I'm going in. Um, but this really speaks to UniQ, and in particular, it speaks to Blade, and it speaks to to what we're what we're attempting here. The question is from uh, original Robert is, why is it necessary to compensate for the high and low frequencies in a soundstage reproduction when a live orchestral uh, performance is fine as is? It's a, that is a really super helpful question because what we're talking about at this point is point source. Right, so my voice is coming from one space. Even though I have components in my chest, in my nasal cavity, in my throat, it's coming from one space. That's a point source. Mm -hmm. On stage, the we'll talk about an orchestra. We'll talk about a um, you know just a, a court, a string quartet. You have the violin and the cellos and the violos, and they're in a space in 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 time and in place. So where that sound comes, we we can hear it. We can tell. The problem is it goes right back to having to use two speakers to replicate that sound. If I have one here and one there, that's where that time coherence goes and that's where we're not able to pinpoint where something is in the sound stage. So the, um, in nature, everything has a, a point source. A guitar has a point source, a drum, so on and so forth. But we're not talking about nature, we're talking about replicating nature and then that's the, um, the limitations of the speaker. So I just wanted to jump on that because it really speaks to, we talk about blade and we talk about point sourcing and stuff, what, what that actually is all about. So thanks for, for letting me jump in on that. Absolutely, absolutely. You guys, we're, we're gonna get through as many of these questions as we can. So if you see one that jumps out, by all means, we'll, we'll go through as many of these as possible. Um, let's see here. We'll start knocking out some, some questions here. Obviously, we already but, saw well, Jason. You guys are, everyone's amazing for these questions. These are fantastic. Yeah, yeah there's some great ones. Anything, I'll, I'll just start to go free flow here. Do you, anyone jump out that you guys want to uh, tackle first, and then I'll, I'll start? Uh, actually, I wanna, what I'll do quickly is, because I think this will actually uh, hammer a lot of the questions, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just kind of give a, a quick brief of what our LS family of products consists of yeah, and kind of what they can do. So. Uh, in the LS product family, we have one passive model that would need amplifiers. You know, you bring your own amplifiers, bring your own source. Uh, and we have three other models that are what we call active. So they have all the amplifiers, all the source, all the preamps, everything built in. You just plug it in your wall and you, and you go. Uh, so the, the, the first model that we made in this series was the LS50. That was released in 2011 and quickly became one of the most award-winning speakers in the industry. Uh, everybody reviewed it, fell in love with it. It was the speaker that everybody else wanted to be able to compete with. And, uh, and that was the LS50. Then uh, I think it was 2018 or so, we released the LS50 wireless. This was our first uh, really big push into the active mar uh, market. So we took the LS50s, we made an active version of them. We added analog and digital inputs, uh, our own in-house DSP, our own in-house amplifiers, and basically created that first generation. We also did our first run at uh, apps. So we had a Kef, uh, Kef Stream app and a Kef Control app. Uh, then that, that kind of went through. Then we came out with the LSX version ones, uh, which were just called the LSX. So this was a smaller format, more for you know a tabletop on a desk or for a smaller room or with a TV, something like that. And that you also used the same platform as those original LS50s. Uh, time went on, we got better. We found a better way to make an app. We found better ways to increase the power, DSP, all those things. And so we announced the LS50 Wireless 2s about two and a half years ago, I think. And the big thing we did there is we added HDMI eARC. Uh, we have found that a lot of people want to be able to connect their TV to their hi-fi system. We un unveiled our brand new Kef Connect app. So it's an all-in-one app. Uh, it's an unbelievably good app. Um, you know, Kef's a good size company, but this app is is so good. It, it, every time I use it, I can't believe how good an app it is for, in a way, how small we are. It's just amazingly good, super intuitive, makes it really easy to switch from different speakers if you have more than one pair throughout your house and things. Uh, really, really Adam, awesome. can, I, can I jump in and say something right now about that app? Yeah, absolutely. I was blown away. You know, speakers... Yeah, you, know, you can be an audio pro like, you know, they've been doing it for 10 or 20 years and you know where to put speakers and how the room's going to affect it because the room has a huge impact. Mm -hmm. But that app can take a beginner who wants good sound but has no clue as to how to get it. Mm -hmm. And you go into regular mode. You know, if you're in expert mode, it's asking you to change the frequencies and all this yep. stuff. But the beginner mode just asks these questions and it mm -hmm. sets the speaker up perfectly. Yep. I, I was blown away by it. That's the best app I've ever seen. For Thank you. 
Yeah, that's thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that, if you that means that I wish I could say I had a part in it, but I did not. <laughs> it's awesome. But yeah. uh, no, and that and that was one of the questions that someone had asked is, you know, what do you recommend for distance off the wall, distance from the wall, and all those things? And the reality is we may have our, hey, this is best distance and here and here or whatever it might be. But the reality is at home, you have to put them somewhere. They can't go yeah. four feet into the room. They got to go on the bookshelves next to the TV. Right. They got to go on your desk in the office. And one thing that we really pride ourselves on at Kef is – Put your audio where it has to go. Put your audio where you want it to go. And, and like in the active products, in the LS products, in the app, we can compensate for all of that. Do you have a subwoofer? Yes or no. Is it a CAF subwoofer? It'll tell you how to set the subwoofer up. Are they on a stand? Are they, are they on a bookshelf? Are they uh, on a desk? All these different things. All this DSP, all this programming, all this crazy complicated stuff is done for you just by pressing a few buttons on the app and it'll even guide you through it. We uh, I, we use a, a KC62 subwoofer and a pair of LS50 wireless twos for our everyday television in the living room on the app. You know, you, you set it up and it's it's default to the KC62 and LS50 wireless. You know, but I'm a, I'm a professional, right? So I figured, well, I'm going to go ahead and play with it a little bit. And I'm going to, you know, change the crossover and play around a little bit, you know, because, right? And uh, no. It just, I said it for KC62 subwoofer and it's just, it's just beautiful. Right. And it, yeah, it, and it takes it to like 68 Hertz or something. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so is, so, you know, to that end, you, I, I could certainly experiment out if I wanted to, but then I, I kind of realized there's no point because, you know, it's actually perfectly matched. So mm -hmm. again, to the app and, and, it, and that goes back broken record here, right, to the engineering efforts that we put in that, you know, we have people that actually spend time putting this together and, and working on crossover uh, separation and, and so on and so forth, crossover points and, and all. And it's, um, you know, proof is in the pudding of what we're getting as a product. Adam, and real quick, when you, when you were discussing this, you mentioned a great use case, which somebody asked about, I'm sure we can probably go back and post the question on um, how you could use these for either like a 2.0 or a 2.1 in comparison sure. or in place of, you know, a traditional soundbar or something like that. So how, how would these work in that type of a configuration? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we've really and actually we've created a marketing campaign based around the soundbar. Uh, we've called it soundbar reimagined because we've seen so many consumers get soundbars and soundbars are an excellent way to get into music, get into better audio than the TV has. But quickly, we find a lot of people kind of want to go past that. They want a little more output. They want a little more bass. They want to get to an actual real size driver. And so in this Soundbar Reimagine campaign, we show that any of the LS product, because it all has HDMI ARC on it, ARC or eARC, uh, you can just take your TV, go into the uh, HDMI eARC output, plug it into the back of the primary speaker. And in the app, you can actually tell the speaker to wake up to the HDMI input. And so now you can just grab your your Samsung, your Sony, your LG TV remote, turn the TV on, and boom, the, t the speakers automatically power on. They turn to the correct input. And now the TV remote will control the volume on the speakers. It couldn't be any easier to have incredible quality sound just by plugging something in. Yeah, and, and the mid-range sounds so much better. Yeah, yeah all the LS sound products bars have gotten to the point where... Yeah, they used to have actual drivers in them that were big yep. enough to reproduce the mid range. You know, they yep. used to be mm -hmm. six inches tall. Yep. Right. They, yeah, they, they did. Yeah. But now yeah. they're, you know, that tall. And that's and that's kind of the issue is that it well, and let's just say that the fact that sound bars have skyrocketed in price. Uh the LSX2s at fourteen hundred dollars are actually this the same price as a lot of better uh better sound bars, and the LS2 LS, LSX twos will far outperform them. Um, and the dialogue oh, track is is oh, ninety no. percent of the importance of a movie. We love we love demoing music and movies on them. But I tell people go watch Jeopardy on this yeah. thing, and you're going to yeah. notice you can actually hear them talking. You can actually hear the con contestants without cranking the volume up to try to hear it. So uh, all the LSX all the LS products all have uh, subwoofer outputs. On the LSX twos, you get one subwoofer output. On the LS fifty wireless twos and the LS sixties, you get two subwoofer outputs. So you could actually do dual stereos, creating true three way or four way systems, which right. is uh, be mono or stereo subwoofers. Yep. Yeah, which is amazing what you can do. So um, uh, someone, I just real quick, uh, one of the last questions was, how does it work with Control Four? Uh, we actually have IP drivers for Control Four, so you're able to get your installer to program in no problem. Uh, that's super easy. I can't help you, Brian, with the Powerball. Sorry, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll all be there, dude. <laughs> um, 
any of the Kef speakers would be, <laughs> would be great for vinyl. Um, and then the, the last question that I want to answer real quick, and I'll kind of hand the mic back over, is uh, Sean L. had asked, um, interested to know what the compromises are with lower cost speakers. And this is one point that Jack kind of quickly touched on, but I want to bring up real quick with Kef that is super, super unique. So Kef is what's called a tier one manufacturer. And, and what that means is we actually own the factories we build all of our product in. So Kef builds, designs, and engineers everything that we sell. So we're not buying a tweeter from somebody, a crossover from somebody, a, a basket from somebody, a base driver from somebody. We build and design it ourselves across the board. So when I talk to our, our business partners, I don't believe we actually have a better sounding speaker or a lesser quality speaker. Everything we build is the best it can possibly be. They're just for different type of systems. So we don't even consider like a lower cost speaker to be subpar to a blade. No, a lower cost speaker is just for somebody using an inexpensive receiver, a lesser expensive subwoofer, perhaps not as big of an amplifier. And it creates a lower cost system. There is zero compromise in a lower cost, a Q150 at $300 retail for Black Friday versus the blades behind me at $35,000 a pair. There is zero compromises in either of those speakers. Um, now, of course, yeah, the blades are going to be better, but yeah, you're spending what a hundred times more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least. And so it allows for the consumer to actually kind of go on an audio journey that's always focused on the best playback possible, and that's where we get such a, a really unique response from our our customers, from people who are part of the Kef family is that whatever they may buy, it's always the best at what it can be. And that's just something that's really, really, really cool. Uh, when we release a new product, we're always worried that someone's going to want to trade in their the, the product they previously had and then and get you a new one. And we find that our, 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 our Kef family just takes that speaker, puts it in the bedroom, and gets the new one, puts it in the living room now. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's all got their own thing. And then the last thing I'll say is, even when we use our space here at the Kef Music Lounge, we can go from one speaker to the other at crazy different price points and you can still go listen to the inexpensive speaker and find things you love about it. And that's just a very, very unique thing. And the important point to close that out too, is if you're, if you're buying, let's say Q series, you're getting a bespoke UniQ, you're mm -hmm. getting a bespoke crossover. You're getting the, the cabinet has been engineered for the, you know, it's not like, okay, that's the entry level. It's no, we're putting a lot of engineering effort and, and design work into those as well. So what you're getting, and Adam said it beautifully, you're you're getting the best that we can provide at the price point, right? So you're you know, and and, and I think that's a real key as we as we forward, because everybody knows that audio is a journey, right? You get started with what you can afford, and before long you're doing this and you're doing that and you're moving up. And that's one of the things that we're real proud of. There is no shelf that just has UniQ drivers and we just pull it off. There's there's Uniqs for Q and for R and for LS and you know LSX and so on and so forth. So you know we 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 try and, and make sure that every consumer that comes to us gets the best experience they can possibly. And actually, I'm going to get up because I can I can do something here that I can't do at home. I can actually show you guys some uh, Uniq drivers real quick. So I'll get up and grab yeah, one. Yeah, you, got so you ask the next question. Uh, Jack, any other questions you want to? Address. There's a couple. So, uh, and and actually, this there's, there's a question here from Keith. This is which of the uh, Kev speakers would be best for vinyl? And so, I'm going to give you um, just a, a real short answer and say all of them, because it it, it it's a matter of what you want to do with your system. Um, do you you know do you want to have a separate system? You could start with even a Q150, right, and and have a really great setup, and you can go right on into Blade for vinyl. You can take uh, LSX or LS50 Wireless Two, and with a uh, phono preamp, plug directly in. So it really isn't a matter of the best speaker for vinyl. It's what's the speaker that's best for you that you can afford. We're gonna we're gonna do what you ask us to do as as best as we can. And there was one other uh, question while we're waiting for Adam to come back about how long these things last, you know, how long a speaker will last or a driver will last. We have lifetime customers, you know, we have, we have, you know, passive speakers when they're well taken care of and they're treated properly will, you know, be, they'll be with you for, for the long run. In fact, you know, we have customers that bought 
uh, reference in the late seventies and the eighties. And finally, you know, the woofers are just kind of just, just drying out. Um, and, and they won't give the speaker up. So, you know, we help them get them reconed. We don't, you know, we have people that will, will do that for us and all. Um, but I have a pair of, I have several pair of, of, uh, you know, OG LS fifties, uh, the ones right behind me, I use every single day. Those things run eight to 10 hours a day, just constantly. Um, and, you know, knock on wood, we're, uh, I guess, seven years in now, right? So it's all a matter of, of, of what you're going to expect out of the speakers and what you're going to provide for them it's, is really the, the answer to that question. That's the one right there from Shrey. Yep. Yeah. Great question, Shrey. And somebody in the comments earlier a while back mentioned that they inherited a pair of Kev speakers, I think. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it was from their mom or their dad, but you know, they inherited a pair and they said they're still going strong. So I think that really yeah. A testament to the you know how well they do over time and how current they still are. We now, see that on the Kef Owners Group all the time. Somebody say, you know, my my dad passed or my granddad passed, and he gave a pair of one hundred four twos. You know, is there anything I need to know about? It? And they're just and they're kind of rocking out. And those you know speakers are that was a great speaker years yeah. old at that yeah. point. It's just, <laughs> it's just kind of full. You know, it's kind of like season tickets to somewhere. They get they get in the will. You know, we uh, we cautiously wear our Kef shirts on airplanes because every flight it's like. Kef, like the speaker? Oh, yeah, I have a pair of those at home. And you're like, oh, boy. <laughs> Here goes a long two-hour conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, All right, so I'll, I'll, show, I'll just show you real quick. Is so it just me locking up? This is a unique – This is a, a unique. I, I keep using that word uh, – thing to show. So here is a, a UniQ driver. from. This is a previous generation uh, reference speaker. And then here is the previous generation uh, blade UniQ driver. So yeah, from the outside, look very, very similar, but you can actually see from their construction and the way they're designed, they're completely different. Uh, they have their own drivers, everything. And then from looking at, this is actually one of the latest drivers we have. This is the LS50 Meta driver. So you can see uh, just how robust it is. This is the old reference. And what's really unique, which maybe I'll have Jack talk about, is this is the Meta Material Absorption disc on the back. Uh, this is this is something that took us years to develop and uh, is really incredible. Kef is the only patent holder for this technology, and uh, it, it will become kind of the gold standard within all the uh, the entire Kef product range. Uh, we're about to announce and release our first I've used speaker that has this in the back of it. Yeah. And Adam, can I've you describe why? One or two out I was just going to say, can you describe why the dispersion angle was so wide on those speakers versus a traditional, you know, tweeter with a normal waveguide? Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, the tangerine waveguide is um, is real key to that. So if you look at again the the, the picture that's on, uh, there you go. That part. Of the, yep, there. <laughs> Jack, we're losing you a little bit. A, a key component for the dispersion of of high frequencies, the tangerine waveguide. I think we may I'm have sorry. Here we are. Are we good? <laughs> back yeah, I think we're good now. Here for about 30 seconds, I think. Yeah. No. Okay. So, in, so that acts. It, it does two things. It helps with the dispersion of the high frequencies because remember, high frequencies are really very directional, mm -hmm. right? So the cone of a high frequency is is very very narrow. So what the tangerine waveguide does is it opens that up, and that's what keeps that the high frequencies moving in coherence with the mid frequencies is, is otherwise you would have the high frequencies would be just tight like this and then the mids would be panning out this way so the uh, tangerine waveguide just through the way that's designed um does does that <laughs> yeah it is right. for, forgive me but we're, we're, we're getting a percentage more uh spl out of the tangerine waveguide and that what that does is it helps your amplifier not work as hard right and you have more headroom with that so uh tangerine waveguide super key component mm -hmm. very cool uh let's see here leon any questions jumping out at you Jeez. if not welcome back leon somebody asked about the uh, the the platinum record behind you maybe you could talk just a little bit about that real quick oh that was uh really cool because we had our 40th anniversary of the store and uh 
the guy surprised me with a record. A lot of old friends signed it. Congratulations and all that. That was unfortunately 40 was actually a few years ago. Yeah. So. <laughs> but it was really cool. This was, I think it was actually at the Raleigh Music. It was Matters. a Raleigh Music Matters. They presented so, it to me and it, yeah. I was oh, in yeah. it was pretty Adam's cool. Point, at the beginning of the live stream, he talked about, you know, the industry, a lot of folks know each other and they go back, you know, years and years and years. And so after we sort of shut the doors down and, Everyone left. All of the folks from the, in the industry that were exhibiting there kind of stayed behind for a little while and had a nice toast to Leon. And, and that was a great thing that Heather on our marketing team helped put together and had everybody sign and all that good stuff. So Leon's got a, a platinum record. Yeah, I'm not a recording artist. It's awesome. By any <laughs> <way>. <laughs> but a great moment for sure. Uh, Leon, you had the opportunity, to, I think, to be one of the first in the country um, to hear which model was it? The, uh, the towers that came out not too long ago. The LS60s. The LS60s, thank you. Yes. Oh, my Maybe gosh. You can They're talk about incredible. Your experience there. The whole, you know, the, I like speakers that measure well, and KEF speakers measure really well, too. I think that correlates to how they actually sound when you get involved with the music. Um, there's a lot of expensive speakers out there that sell well that when you actually put them in an antiquated chamber and measure them or a Kipple device, they, they don't measure well. Mm -hmm. uh, but you guys, speakers do. Um and I look for that, but they, uh, that is quite the package that you can just plug in, plug in your TV, stream to them. Just an amazing speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. in, in that room, the low end extension for that room to be so big, the one that Adam's sitting in, mm -hmm. it, it pressurizes that entire space. And that's a large space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they, they, they sound awesome for just yeah, a, it's obvious you've got great one. engineers because the, yeah. the way you designed the amplifiers to work with those drivers is just so it's like kind of where do we want to go in, in the last couple of minutes we have do we want to talk about the unicorn uh lf drivers that actually allow us to pressurize the room the way that works in such a small cabinet i can actually so we want to talk about the meta material which you know was so i we go either way or we can do a real quick on both if you I want think we, we should discuss the meta material because a lot of people thought that like whenever they first heard meta material they thought that you were actually changing away from aluminum on the on the nope. woofer material on the cold no, material. I'll, I'll grab a sample. Yeah, I'll yeah, grab I'll a sample that real quick That's too. A good yeah. One. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So really, very simply put, when you put a speaker in a cabinet, sound goes both ways. The same amount of sound goes forward as goes backward. The stuff that goes forward is what we want to hear. The stuff that goes backward tends to bounce around inside the cabinet, and what that will eventually do, it's like reflections. It's just like a bunch of reflections. Will, will come back and interfere with the current sound. It may actually um, help, it may cause deformation, it just, it'll just it cause time smearing, temporal smearing, and so on and so forth. What we've actually done with metamaterial is we've taken what wound up being a, it's literally a plastic disc. I'm gonna, it, it, it's, it's, a lot more, it's a lot more to it than that, but it's a plastic disc that looks just like that. It has 30 channels in it, and each of these 30 channels are tuned to a specific, um, octave or Q, right, from uh, 660 hertz on up. Again, low frequencies, we don't have to worry about that. And I'm not even going to kind of get into to why, but from that frequency range on up is where it's important. That's where the back wave really bothers us. Mm -hmm. So for since the 1940s, I think the first patent for something, which was a long tube, and there, you know, there's other companies that will use like, a long tube that will kind of be connected to the back of the uh, uh, to the tweeter, and you know theoretically the sound travels down that and comes back, but that causes resonances and back waves of its own and all kinds of problems. What the meta material actually does is the sound gets into these channels and it'll excite a specific channel based on the frequency, right? Resonance. So when you have two frequencies that are the same that are beating against each other, they cancel each other out. Lo and behold, we're actually canceling 99%. And I know it's like, oh, yeah, there you go with the marketing numbers again. It's literally 99% of all that back wave energy just disappears in the meta wave, in, in the meta material disc, never to come back again. And it doesn't interfere. So real quick, anecdotally, I've used the same when I was a front of house engineer and when I was designing theaters and stuff, I used basically two albums for my whole career to listen to and I thought I really knew them really, really well, right? I, I understood where the sound stage was. I understood it. And the first time I heard uh, LS50 Metas uh, back up at the, you know, at the KML, I was God 
smacked because there were things in there that I kind of knew were in there, but I didn't know exactly where they were sitting and, and the space that was around different percussion items and stuff. Again, this is a record I've been listening to um, as, as something that I use for work um, for you know, all of my career. And it was subtle. So a lot of people say, oh, they don't really hear a difference, whatever. It's, 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 a, it's a subtle difference. But once you kind of lock into it, it's a huge difference. There's also a lot of huge difference when, when you can hear certain things that just have their own space and time. And that's because that distortion is all, is all kind of gone. So that's kind of a, a, the, the primer on, on meta material. Uh, it's, it, but it required um, basically a redesign of the UniQ the throat of the, the back of the Uniq, uh, the, the tweeter had to be redesigned and there were a bunch of other things that happened. Plus we have a bunch of other technologies we're not even gonna be able to get into um, that are also part of this whole this whole 12th generation Uniq with MetaMaterial as we're calling it, which is available in the LS products and, and uh, Blade and, and um, Jack, reference. What are the so, two, uh, you mentioned two albums, what are the two albums you, that are your go-tos? So um, <laughs> Donald Fagan, um, The Nightfly, right? It's just, it, it's, it's just an album. I know exactly where it is. And this one tends to throw people for a loop. But um, The Replacements, Please to Meet You. Please to meet me is one, one of the finest. Re and of course it was recorded by Jim Dickinson down the road here in Memphis. And it's a wonderful album. Um, <laughs> so those are the two I carry them with me everywhere I go. It's nice now just have my thumb drive. I don't have them on a CD anymore. Right. You know, but that's what I listened to when, when I was doing, I used to do a commercial theater installs and whatnot. And they were my, um, that was, they, they were my go-to. Very, very cool. Lots of good feedback on those. We're getting close to the end here. Real quick, I want to tee Adam up real fast. I'm going to throw a, a picture up here, but this is like the ultimate gaming theater that we're calling it. So we would love, I'd love to ask everyone a huge, huge favor here in about three minutes once we sign off and announce our winner. I'd love for everyone to go over to the Audio Advice YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. We actually just got our 100,000 subscriber plaque. Wow, guys, that's uh, awesome. Wow. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, but we're now almost 160. YouTube's slow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But we did finally get it. It's in our video room. You'll probably see it in the backdrop in some of our videos here real soon. And hopefully uh, we'll get the 200,000 subscriber uh, plaque here real soon. But anyways, if you would do us a huge favor, go over to our YouTube channel. You'll see the premiere there. Getting ready to start here in just a few minutes. We do a full deep dive, a full walkthrough of Adam's home theater. If you guys follow us, you've seen uh, Scott doing a lot of deep dives of home theaters. He did. If you know anything about Raleigh, there's a little bit of gaming company just down the street from here. And we were able to bit. do a really good basement, uh, basement theater and bar and living area and all that good stuff, office and all that good stuff. So that one we just came out about two weeks ago. We got another one getting ready to drop here in just a few minutes. So we'd love for you to go over to YouTube, like it, leave a comment, let us know what you think is really cool. Adam, I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to tell just to tease everyone with a little bit about some of the things that went into that sure so this uh this is my uh my dedicated theater space uh the room is uh, 12 and a half feet wide 25 feet deep and uh it's in the basement uh in north carolina and uh, what i wanted to do is uh, uh basically create something that was kind of unique for for gaming as well as something that allowed for a, a different way of attacking video and so that uh, the funny thing is that front screen looks small, but it's actually about 11 and a half feet wide. The two side projection screens are about eight and a half feet wide. They're one 120 diagonals. And, and so it's almost 30, 30, right? yeah, 30, about 30 linear feet of screen. And so uh, this is showing football, which is actually a really fun way to watch football. You also yeah. realize uh, how much downtime there is in football. So this three screen thing really actually works. Uh, plus, you can do with Red Zone, things like that, which gets really, really fun. Uh, you can pull up a PC. Apple, you can pull up any of the sources at any TV, uh, any of the screens, no problem. But the big thing that we really use it for most is for surround gaming. So if you're playing Flight Simulator, if you're doing a first-person shooter, if you're playing a racing simulator, something like that, you get a full uh, surround immersion. Uh, in the front row, it's well over 180 degrees. In the back row, it's about uh, 160, 170 degrees, give or take. Uh, but it's uh, it was an amazing experience to get to build it. Uh, I've been in the industry since 2004, so I used all my years of experience in design and installation and stuff to kind of build an over-the-top theater. 
Yeah, so yeah you were somebody who sure. made your own CNC machine for some of those. Yeah, really <laughs> hard. Yeah, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a techno nerd and things, and uh, and so uh, you know, I, I I'm never afraid to learn anything when it comes to technology or just how anything is done. I'm the kind of guy that can find what anybody does for a living to be exciting. I'm gonna go on a win. Yeah, Adam, yours was one of the uh, the few that really. Oh, wait, sorry, wait, Jonathan. Again, what's that? I said I'm gonna go out on a whim, and I'm gonna guess that you probably got some NASA socks on right now too, don't you? <laughs> uh, I don't actually wear shorts, but uh, yeah, so I, I do a lot of stuff with NASA as well as kind of a, a, a part-time volunteer thing, but uh, yeah, big space yeah. nerd, big, big just nerd in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Adam, yours was one of the few that really, one of the, I, I work around theaters all day and, you know, I'm constantly looking at inspiration pictures and yours was like one of the ones I was like, oh man, I'm actually really jealous of this theater. It, well, was, it, was, it, was, it was really cool. I literally sent it to the group the very first time I saw it. We have a big sales group and I was like, dude. You guys got to look at this. this when I get to, as part of my job, I get to design. Uh, I've been designing theaters for well over 15 years. And so I've taken every little snippet of a design I do. Oh, I like this feature. I like that feature. I'll keep that. Ooh, let's do this. And so, yeah, it's, it's allowed me to kind of come up with some of the best things that uh, kind of push them all together. Well, yeah. we're excited really to show excited that off in just a few minutes. We'd love everyone to go check that out. But real quick, Nick, best comment, best question. Maybe, uh, Adam, you can show everyone what you guys are giving away here today. A little giddy bag. We've got a really awesome gift bag from Kef, full of uh, water bottle, keychains, uh, pens, towels, writing pad, T-shirts, and lanyards. So it's all all of uh, some really cool Kef swag. Cool. Yeah. Well, so typically we do best question. Okay. Now we did not get to touch on near as many questions I think as it could be justified. So there could be better ones out there. So. I'm going to go ahead and pick my favorite comment. It's very rare that a comment makes me laugh on stream. Uh, and I've looked at it like three times. It's made me laugh. It was from Jason Roop and it was nice shoulder blades, Adam, uh, because he's got blades on his shoulders and I, I couldn't help it. I, I'm sorry, guys. It's the best Dude, that question, was but fantastic, this one's Jason. I about lost it, man. I know. I did. I, I couldn't help it. <laughs> That's terrific. Uh, thanks for making this fun. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks for making this a lot of fun. And this hour goes by super fast. It's great to be back with everyone. Uh, let's do our little here drum roll for our best, I'm sorry, for our actual giveaway for these $1,400 LSX2s. These things are amazing. Uh, we can't wait to provide these to you guys. Our winner, thanks for doing our virtual drum roll here, is Brad, I'm not going to butcher your last name, I hope, Keetit, K-E-T-E-T, -E -E from Texas. So Brad, you are our winner. Congratulations. Awesome. Uh, You're going to be super, super happy with these. I'm positive of that. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Jack, for joining us uh, this time. It was great having you. I'm sure we'll have you back on. It's been a ton of fun. Lots of great comments on uh, just how you guys explain everything and all the technology that goes into CAF. I'm sure we'll have you guys back. Here I'd love to. Time. Yeah, it was a yeah. lot of fun. I really enjoyed myself. Thanks so much for putting up with my going off the deep end ex explanations <laughs> and would you know love to do it again. Hey, is, go this put on, is this video put on YouTube, Jonathan? Yeah, so we are premiering yeah. it right now in three minutes. So if you but head on over to YouTube, go ahead. Well, so if, if anyone who we didn't answer your question, if you want to go to YouTube and put your question in there, I'll see if some of us can, from Kef can actually go in and answer those questions because uh, I know we won't be able to do them here. But if you go to the YouTube video of this video, uh, we'll do our best to try to answer some of those questions. It'll be on our channel uh, mm -hmm. very shortly. Yeah, but, you know, and Adam, whatever I can do to help you with that, let me know. Be more than happy. And there is just one other comment I want to reply to. Yes, indeed. Go Phillies. So, That's right. You know, yeah. <laughs> That's right. yeah. Well, thanks, everyone. Nick, Leon, always great having you guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a great evening. We'll see you again real soon. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Cool, everyone. <laughs>